Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and in this video, I'm going to show you the bare minimum you need in order to get up and running with CICD and GitHub using Visual Studio 2019 and Azure. Now, you might be wondering, what is CICD? Well, in a previous video, I showed you how to create code on your computer using Visual Studio 2019. I also showed you that you can create a local Git repository. When you are ready to upload those changes up onto a server, you created a GitHub account and posted it there. But what happens if you want to make changes, and maybe you're even working with a team, and then you want that code to go live? That's what continuous integration and continuous deployment is, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. Please don't flame me if I say something wrong. I'm not a full-time developer, and I'm just learning these things as I go along. Go ahead and use the comments section if you have something to share. To get started, I suggest you install the Visual Studio IDE of your choice. You can get the free Community Edition. Make sure you follow my video that explains how to get up and running with Git and GitHub. On that subject, you are going to need a GitHub account, so make sure you sign up for that. You'll also want to get your free Azure account, and then you're also going to need Azure DevOps. This is that glue that allows you to create a CI-CD, what we call pipeline. Now, you can create your code in GitHub and just code from there, but usually you're probably going to use some sort of an IDE on your computer. So we're in Visual Studio 2019, and we're going to create a project. I'm just going to create a standard ASP.NET core web application because it will be easy to follow this. Click Next, call it Web Application 1, and click Create. Follow all the steps until it's created. Okay, so let's just run this application to see what it looks like. And you can see it's just a simple website that got set up. And this is kind of a scaffolding so you can add your own code. Let's follow the steps to add this code to source control. And again, if you want to learn more about that, you can watch the other video on my YouTube site on how to use Visual Studio and Git. I'm going to go ahead and publish this to GitHub. And we'll just check GitHub to make sure that it published properly, and you can see there's the web application one. Before we go too far, we're going to need to tell Azure the target framework that we're using. So go into Visual Studio and find the project and right-click on it and choose Properties. You can see here the target framework is .NET Core 2.1. So far, we've created a project in Visual Studio and we've published it to GitHub. Now, we can't just have GitHub throw that code into Microsoft Azure. We need to set up the place for it to land. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm at the Microsoft Azure portal. Click Create Resource. Then choose Web App. And then select a resource group. I don't have any, so I'm going to create a new one. And I'm just going to call that Bill YouTube Web Application 1. And click OK. And then I'll just give the instance details. I'll call it the same thing. And now here's that runtime stack that I was showing you before. We know that it's .NET Core 2.1 because we're just in Visual Studio and we checked for that. OK, and we'll just leave everything else the way it is with the defaults. And go ahead and click Next, Next. And we'll go ahead and just create that resource so that that will be the landing area for our project. Great, that deployment's been created and complete, so we can click Go to Resource just so that we're at the page that we're going to use it. And you can see there's a URL that was created up here at the top right. And if I click on that, it'll actually open up in the browser and it's just letting us know that the app service is running. At this point, you have a project in Visual Studio on your computer. You have a GitHub repository, and you also have a place for the code to run in Azure. Here we're at dev.azure.com, or Azure DevOps, and what we're going to do is create a build. Now, here's the thing. We could over come over here to Pipelines, and then go to Releases, and choose New Pipeline, connect our GitHub code directly to Azure. So every time we build our code, it just automatically goes up into Azure. But what happens if you build your code just fine in Visual Studio and it runs, 
but it doesn't run in, in Azure. And the reason for why it might not build is because maybe you have some other dependencies, some other code that you don't build on your computer. What you want to do is first build it in the cloud first and make sure everything's successful. And then you can take that successful build and release it to Azure. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to pipelines and builds and choose new pipeline. Then I'm going to choose GitHub. And what will happen is if this is your first time, you'll be asked to allow DevApp, <laughs> Azure DevOps to connect to GitHub. So we'll just go ahead and authorize that Azure pipelines. And we'll choose a repository that we're going to work with. And now it says uh, only selected repositories or all repositories. Well, I already have one selected, which is this web application one. And I'm going to go ahead and approve and install the Azure pipelines into GitHub. And I'm going to need to sign in to do that. And it takes a bit the first time. And now you can see we have uh, the different options for how we're going to configure our pipeline. Now we know that our project was an ASP.NET Core application. I'm just going to choose this one here and save and run. And that's fine. We're just going to call that setup with Azure Pipelines. And what this is doing is it's taking a configuration file for how GitHub and Azure DevOps are going to work, how Azure pipelines are going to work together. And so a new piece of code, a new file called a YAML file is going to be installed into your GitHub project. Now what's happening is you're basically watching the equivalent of a build in Visual Studio happening on the web. So we'll just go ahead and wait for this whole build to complete. Now what's nice about this is we can see whether or not it built successfully and it did, but there is one warning. And if I click on this, you can see there's no test assemblies. That's perfectly okay for us because we didn't build any yet. I'm going to take a quick little diversion to show you two things that occurred in the background when we were setting up that build pipeline. First of all, I'm here at GitHub. So let's go ahead and click on this web application one. And you'll notice that there is a new file that got created called azurepipelines.yml. That's that YAML file I was referring to. And if I click on this, you can see that Microsoft already set up the common settings for how the product is going to get built. You're going to have to look this up and read up on it. There's a lot of settings that you can add here and there's a lot of configuration options. As you'll recall, we set up that build pipeline and a build occurred. So after the build was complete, it actually sends you an email. Azure DevOps sends you an email and it looks like this. So this way you know exactly what's going on in your environment. Okay, so right now we're working with the CI part of CI CD still. What I want to do is just make a change to my code and make sure that that build happens automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a change to my code. I'm going to add a heading here and just do hello world and run the code, make sure that it works. I'm editing the index page, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is hello world on our index page. That's great. You can see it's changed over here in the solution explorer. I'll go to team explorer changes. Added hello world. Commit that and then sync it up to GitHub. Here in GitHub, I'm already inside of the repository and here's the index page. Let's open that up and there's our hello world text. Now we're in Azure DevOps and we can see that the added hello world build is now starting. And there, now it built. So what we've done is we've basically created a pipeline that anytime we make a change in GitHub, it's going to automatically build in Azure DevOps.
With the CI part working, we're now going to go to the CD part. Again, we're in Azure DevOps or dev.azure.com. I'm going to go to Releases on the left side here under Pipelines. Then I'll click New Pipeline. And I'm going to choose Azure App Service Deployment and apply that. Now, you can actually stage your deployments, and I'm still getting used to this, so I don't know all the details around it. However, one thing I will point out is there's this little exclamation mark here, and there's nothing that matches over here. It feels like you should be doing something over here, when in fact you actually have to address it by coming over here to this exclamation mark item and clicking on the link. Here's where you're setting up this stage. I'm going to click the pick list and choose my free trial, and then I'm going to choose the service name. And that's the one we created earlier in Azure. Remember, YouTube, Bill YouTube Web Application 1. And I'm also going to rename this pipeline. I'll just put this in so that we have it matching our build pipeline. Now, there's a bunch of options up here at the top. I'm going to click back here on pipeline because we're not done yet. Sure, this thing can build, and I'm sorry, rather build. It can push the code up to Azure, but what code? Well, if I click on add an artifact over here, this is where I tell Azure DevOps what should go up onto Azure. Now, this is also where I could have just chosen GitHub, and when I went and published my code up to GitHub, it could have automatically just sent up to Azure, but we're doing a build first, so that's selected. Now what I'm going to do is choose this, Web Application 1, and I'm going to use the latest build and click Add. Now, I'm going to click this little um, lightning bolt here, and you can see there's some continuous deployment triggers. I'm going to enable this first one, and this creates a new release every time a build is available. So every time I submit a build to GitHub, GitHub's going to then send it to the build pipeline. And if the build pi pipeline is successful, it will automatically publish up to Azure. So that's cool. Let's take a look at what this little lightning bolt does on this side. You can see there's a lot of options here. And you're going to have to investigate these. I'm still investigating them myself. But just do know, you can actually make sure that code does not get published until you're ready for it to publish. As a matter of fact, down here on the bottom left, if I click this and set a schedule, I can even say when I don't want code to get released to Azure. You can see here Saturday and Sunday is turned off by default. I'm just going to disable that so code always goes up to Azure and close this. Now there's a lot of other options that you'll want to investigate, but we've set up the bare minimum in order to get our code up onto Azure. So I'll click Save and click OK. Now I'll come over here to Releases. And you can see it looks like it's ready. There are no errors. Now it's time to try and put all this together so we have a full CI CD pipeline. Here we have our index page in the Solution Explorer. and I'm going to change this from Hello World to Hello Azure. I'll just run that to make sure it works. That's great. So on my local computer, the project built, and we have Hello Azure in the title. Once again, I'll go to Team Explorer. I'll click Changes, added Hello Azure, commit that then sync that up to GitHub by pushing it. Let's verify that the change went through on GitHub. I'll click on Pages and Index. You can see it says added Hello Azure. That's good news. And if I come in here, I see Hello Azure. Now we're in the Azure DevOps and we can go to Builds. And you can see right now it's building added Hello Azure. Nothing's going to happen yet until this is complete, the build. The build was successful, but let's see what happened with our release. I'm going to click here on Releases. And you're going to see there's an error message. Now, what happened here? 
I'm going to click on this so we can take a look at the error message. And you can, say, you can see it did not find a zip file. Now I'm still learning this myself, but I believe what's happening is that the build creates a zip file and then the CD part, the, the release pipeline, takes that zip file and extracts it into Azure. And that zip file cannot be found. So it turns out there's something that we need to change in our YAML file that allows this zip file to be put in a place where it can be picked up and added to Azure. So I'm back here in Visual Studio, and what I'm going to do is go to the Solution Explorer and click this Switch Views icon. And I'm going to go to the Folder View. And then down here you can see here's the YAML file. I could be doing this in GitHub too, but my process, my workflow is that I make all the change in Visual Studio and push that up to GitHub. So I'm going to open up this YAML file. I'm going to scroll down. And just before this last task, I'm going to go ahead and add another task. And it's going to say publish artifacts. Specifically, it says dash task colon space publish build artifacts at one. So this is apparently what we need. So we'll now go back to Team Explorer and submit this change, change here. Added publish task to YAML file. Commit that. And now I'll go over here and sync it up and push that back to GitHub one more time. Once again, the code automatically went to the build pipeline. And now if we come over here to the release pipeline, we can see it's synchronizing right now. And hopefully we don't get that error. So what should be happening now is that zip file is being pushed up to Azure. I didn't show it in the video, but that little progress icon went on for a while. So I refreshed the page and then it showed the stage one saying that it's done which is great. So just know though that if you are waiting there for a very long time, you might just want to refresh the page and it might just show that it's done. Okay, so this is again what our app looked like in Azure. It wasn't really an app, it's just a landing page that Azure creates until you publish your code. Now what I'm gonna do is reload the page and see what happens. There we go. There's our Hello Azure page and it, with our app, so we're good. What we've done now is we've gone from Visual Studio up to GitHub. We built the code inside of Azure Pipelines, and then after it was built, that code was published up into Azure. And we now have a CI CD pipeline. Be aware with what I just showed you, any time you make a change and publish it to the master branch, the code's going to automatically go up to Azure. So you'll want to take a look at all the options available to you to make sure that you actually want that to happen. Here's a cool little tip for you. Sometimes you might want people to know whether or not your code is up to date or not. So what you can do is go into your pipeline, make sure you're at your build pipeline, then come up here to the top right hand corner and choose status badge then copy the text of the status badge. Probably you want the simple sample markdown. And then what you're gonna do is go to GitHub or of course Visual Studio and create a readme file. So I clicked add readme.md and then I'm just gonna paste that code in and I'll commit the file And now you can see that the Azure pipeline shows that the last build succeeded. This kind of is a little badge on your site so people know that you are keeping the code up to date and that it is building. Thanks a lot for watching this video. It takes a lot to produce. So I'd appreciate it if you like, comment, and sign up for notifications.